Welcome to the Common Man Football Show. My name is James Coburn, and today's episode, we are doing uh, the top five quarterbacks in the 2019 NFL Draft based on analytics. Uh, if you're new to the show, new to the work that I do, all terms and definitions will be in the description. Uh, I'm going to be doing more top five videos uh, for the 2019 NFL Draft leading up to uh, the inevitable draft, if you will, the first round of the 2019 draft. So um, get ready to see multiple top five videos, uh, looking at the data side of things and uh, going from there. So uh, let's get into the list. So first off, at number five, when it comes to quarterbacks, we have Brett Riffin, quarterback out of Boise State. Uh, when you look at his production data, at least in terms of his best single season high school and FBS stat score, uh, he had 84.54 high school score and 84.24 FBS score. Based on my data since the 1956 class when it comes to FBS data and the 2007 class when it comes to high school data, uh, Brett Riffin pretty much hits all the thresholds you're looking for in terms of starters and <clears throat> hits above all the areas you're looking for in terms of Pro Bowl quarterbacks. Which is good. Um, he essentially is one of the quarterbacks in this class that has Pro Bowl potential. But when you look at his career data, that's where he runs into a couple issues. Uh, his uh, career FPS score is 66.30 out of 100. Doesn't quite hit the All-Pro threshold. Does hit at least above the Pro Bowl threshold slightly. Um, Andy Dalton is an example of, of the type of production score, if you will, for a career um, with Brett Riffin. Uh, and of course, when you look at the averages at the position, he's slightly below what the average is for a Pro Bowl and starter when it comes to his, his career data. But this is still a good profile. I think when it comes to Brett Riffin, you're looking at someone that um, will probably be a day three, day two pick. But I think that there's enough talent there in production there that if he gets an opportunity to start, he could have sort of a Nick Mullins-like career. I think that's very possible with a guy like Brett Riffin, uh, is that he, he becomes a guy who <clears throat> doesn't get valued very highly uh, in the draft, but does end up on a team and does eventually become a starter at some point if he's given opportunities and if he develops. So that's the best sort of case for him, and that's why he's number five on this list. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, at number four, we have Jake Browning out of Washington. Um, very controversial pick, I would say, on this list, but... I'm just going with what the data says, and what the data says is Jake Browning has at least solid all-around data uh, for a quarterback. Uh, when you look at his FBS score and his high school score, he had a 96.21 high school score and an 89.62 FBS score. All those areas hit above the Pro Bowl quarterback thresholds when it comes to single season performance. Uh, when you look at his career data, he essentially... Uh, doesn't hit above the all-pro threshold, but does hit above the Pro Bowl threshold and the starter career threshold. He's a little bit closer to the averages of a, of a Pro Bowler and a starter. And I would say that is a general sort of view of Jake Browning. I think, you know, based on pure talent, I do think Brett Riffin is a more talented quarterback than Jake Browning. But I do think that Jake Browning, even though he's gotten a lot of flack, even though he's someone that's probably going to be a day through a UDFA, probably won't ever get an opportunity to be a significant player in the NFL if he gets an opportunity if he gets some time to develop he could end up being someone that becomes a starter down the line um, because he has good again good high school data good uh, good uh, general production data um, does have some flaws of course uh, you know again he's not the most talented quarterback ever but he just on paper again this is purely based on paper he has enough good things to say about him to put him on this list and that is why he's at number four at number three, we have Jordan uh, Tamu uh, out of Ole Miss. Uh, when you look at his FBS production score, he had an 80.15 high school production score, a 77.65 FBS production score. Uh, doesn't quite hit the starting quarterback threshold or the Pro Bowl threshold. But what he has above guys like Riffin and above guys like Jake Browning is his career FBS score of 77.64, hits at least the All-Pro career threshold. A big reason for that is that he's only been a one-year starter, so this is just based on one year, which is sort of the biggest sort of issue with him. But I do think that it's a good enough sort of starting point to show the type of talent that he could potentially have. 
Um, he doesn't really hit the all-pro career average, but he does hit above the Pro Bowl average and the starter average, which is why he's number three in this list. <clears throat> he's relatively young. He's talented, and I think there's a lot of positives to him, um, which is why he's number three. He only has one year worth of starts, but there's a lot of quarterbacks. In fact, the last two quarterbacks I'm going to be talking about on this list only have one year worth of start. And um, because of that, uh, I do think I have to put uh, Jordan at number three just because of the top two. Then we get, of course, to number two, which is Dwayne Haskins, uh, quarterback out of Ohio State. Uh, when you look at his FBS data, and high school data, he had a 56.70 high school production score and a 96.43 FBS score. Best single season scores. And um, he does hit above the starter quarterback threshold when it comes to high school, but doesn't hit the Pro Bowl uh, score. Uh, and when you look at his best single season score, he does hit above the starter threshold and the Pro Bowl threshold at that position. So when it comes to Dwayne Haskins, the reason why he's number two instead of number one is purely because of his high school, court, his high school production score. Had a great FBS stat score, but didn't quite hit that high school score that he needs to hit. And because of that, th those are the big sort of things that are kind of lowering his uh, his data. His those particular things. So when you look at his career data, he had a 96.43. Again, he's a one-year starter, but this is based on that one year. Hits above the all-pro career threshold, pro bowl threshold, and starter threshold. Hits above the averages as well, but it is important to remember that Dwayne Haskins has only started one year of college football as a FBS starter um, for an entire season. So because of that, you do have to be cautious with a guy like this. And I do understand that this is probably a, a thing that's going to happen more often nowadays <clears throat> as quarterbacks leave earlier and earlier because, you know, quarterbacks didn't used to leave this early. Most of the time they would, they would stay until they're a senior or a junior and then make the leap. Um, this sort of quarterbacks declaring as a sophomore and stuff has been a relatively new phenomenon um, in many ways. So it's something that the data will probably have to adjust to eventually. But until that data adjusts, until we get a good, clear idea about things, do proceed with caution with Vigali Dwayne Haskins because he does not have a lot of experience. He did have a very good year last year, but he's still someone that is a black box in many ways in terms of what he is at the next level. And there is no bigger black box than the number one quarterback on this list and Kyler Murray out of Oklahoma. When you look at his high school data and his FBS data, he hits above the high school production score um, uh, for pro bowlers and all pro players. In terms of his FBS score and his high school score, you know, has 84.25 in terms of high school data and 97.32 in terms of FBS data. Uh, when you look at the career data uh, areas, hits above the all-pro threshold, pro bowl threshold, and starter threshold, and of course when you look at the averages above all those. But again, when it comes to Kyler Murray, the biggest question mark with him um, has to do with the lack of starts. He is essentially a one-year starter at the position um, in terms of being a starter for the entire year. Uh, he's someone that is just a black box. I mean, again, a lot of the quarterbacks this year that have the best data are, are players where there there are question marks and I do not think that this is that strong of a quarterback class I really don't um, if I'm proven wrong I'm proven wrong but I think that there's a lot of inexperience in this class I think the quarterbacks who have the most experience um, have not been the most talented or the most productive guys like Drew Locke guys like Daniel Jones you know a lot of people point to this year those are guys that just do not have great all-around data Guys like Will Grin, Ryan Finley are players that have hit 24 years old. And most quarterbacks who are 24 years old when they get drafted in the first round um, do not hit high quality outcomes. And the best case scenario you're looking for with those guys is to become a starter in many ways if they're 24 years old. And that's saying something, you know. Um, so this is not the greatest quarterback class. But I do think that there are a, there is a chance I think there's going to be one or two starters out of this class. Um, I, I don't expect all five of the quarterbacks I mentioned on this show to end up being starters, but I do think that there's going to be a couple here and there, but just don't expect a Peyton Manning to come out of this class or a Tom Brady or a Russell Wilson or a Andrew Luck or uh, any guy like that. I think this class you're going to be looking, you're going to be getting guys like Jay Cutler. You're going to be getting guys uh, like uh, Brady Quinn. You know, you're going to be getting players that I think are not going to meet the expectations that you put on them. So 
As long as you don't put too high expectations, I think good things will come out of this class. And of course, my name is James Coburn. You can find my other work at draftcoburn.wordpress.com. You can also find me on Twitter at Gymmetrics. And if you like this content and you want more content like this, be sure to leave a like and subscribe. Share this video as well with anybody that you know. Hit that notification bell in case you want to be reminded when another video of mine drops. And I'll talk to you guys in the next video. Peace.